Gatwick Airport is the second busiest airport in the UK and the busiest single runway airport in the world. It's an iconic airport with a rich history that has seen continuous growth until the recent pandemic. Despite that, the airport is still home to many leisure destinations with many airlines frequenting the two terminals at Gatwick. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the upcoming Origami Studios version of Gatwick Airport from Microsoft Flight Simulator. After releasing a stunning version of the same airport on X-Plane 11, the team, in partnership with INI Builds, have brought this airport to the new sim. But before we start, it's worth noting that this is a pre-release copy and there may still be a few minor issues. Plus, any issues that I do bring up may not be present in the final build. With all that said, let's take a look at Gatwick Airport from Origami Studios. Looking at the airport from aerial perspective, there's already a lot to like. It blends in really nicely with the default scenery of the simulator, and I really like the use of the trees and the airport buildings to mask some of the satellite imagery. However, there are some things that I am not too fond of, and that is particular with the imagery used near runway 26 right. It's a light grass greeny colour, then it goes into this darker grass stuff. Now, I'm not particularly too fond of this, and after looking at some of the imagery online, after looking at some of the imagery online, this harsh transition just isn't present, so it does strike me a little bit odd. Gatwick Airport is a very complex airport with lots of terminal buildings, maintenance hangars, offices, fuel farms and much more. So there's a lot to model and get right here. Now having worked at Gatwick Airport for many years before the pandemic, I'm very familiar with both the layout as a passenger and also from an ops perspective. So seeing the airport in this amount of detail is incredible and some of the nuances that Gatwick is known for have also been modelled. So for example, the combination of newer and older building structures in the South Terminal are extremely well done and really, really pleasant to see. The South Terminal also houses the round terminal of Pier 3. Now this place does hold a very special and near and dear place in my heart as I used to travel often from this terminal when Virgin was present with their 747s. Now what is really nice to see is the amount of detail and care and attention spent on the actual modelling of the building itself, along with plenty of ground clutter and accurate markings throughout. I did feel as though that the markings on the ground were a little bit blurry when close up, but perhaps this is because it hasn't yet been optimised, or perhaps it's because it's a conversion of a previous x product. All that said, the HSBC signage that litters the airport is also present on the jetways and the terminal building itself. Now if we take the monorail over to North Terminal, we'll see that this has also been modelled. However, there are a few little trees that do get in the way, but this is such a super minor detail and not anywhere that you would spend any time as a pilot. As we arrive into the North Terminal, the entrance has been modelled to a good level of detail. One thing that I did notice and I will criticise is that the textures do feel a bit flat. These buildings have stood the test of time with plenty of weathering and wear and tear, yet the buildings in a sim do not have that appearance at all. They're typically a solid texture colour, very little weathering, very little dirt, grime and all sorts of other things that get attached to these buildings. So it would be nice to see that enhanced in the future. What was nice to see however was the hotels such as the Sofitel and the Hampton by Hilton and they've been wonderfully modelled with the correct signage which looks fantastic in the sim. As with the other terminal areas, Pier 5 also looked great. Many aircraft types use these stands and as such there's plenty of ground markings to make best use of the gates. All of that is here and accurate based on charts and maps that I could see. In fact, the emergency stop buttons and communication tools have also been included alongside the ground equipment. The iconic bridge that allows a 747 to pass under is equally as detailed and stands tall over taxiway Lima. At the end of the bridge is Pier 6 and just like the other piers at the airport, it's nicely detailed. Origami Studios have modelled the airport based on the current layout with the construction work that is still going at the old A380 stand. Beyond the airport, Origami have done a great job at modelling other parts of the airport. Virgin Atlantic's maintenance hangar has been included, whilst the train station has been given some TLC, and in fact the National Rail logo has been painted on top of the station itself, which, if you're a pilot that regularly flies into Gatwick, you'll appreciate that level of detail. Turning our attention to the night lighting, there is some impressive work going on here. The runways in particular look spectacular, 
the taxiway lights up beautifully, but one area in which I would like to see a little bit more life is in the terminals themselves. Most of them are dark with no light textures applied and it gave the appearance of a very lifeless and dull airport at night when actually the reality is quite the opposite. Likewise, the North Terminal has some really stunning purple and dark blue lighting which was not present in this rendition of the product. Finally, the other bit I didn't like about the night lighting was the fact that hotels and other outing buildings didn't have any light supplied at all. All that said, there is a fantastic use of dynamic lighting, in particular within the pier and terminal sections itself, so when you are flying through this airport, you do get a very realistic approach. Some of the imagery used does bleed through, with the texturing and the 3D models do not completely cover it up. Performance was great. Considering the size and scope of the airport, I was using the E320 perfectly fine on my system. That said, there was a few little stutters here and there when I was panning the camera towards the airport as the details were loaded in. And whether you love it or hate it, it is worth noting that there is no interior modelling here whatsoever. This was a little off-putting when sat at gates at Pier 6, as typically you can see through, especially with the large glass windows. So just to see some basic modelling in there would have been appreciated. Overall though, first impressions of this airport are great. There are some obvious areas where the airport has been a port from another platform, in particular with the texturing, but the two teams have done a fantastic job at bringing Gatwick over to the new simulator. Those minor issues aside, this is a detailed and performance friendly rendition of an incredibly important UK airport. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you again in the next video.